Without further ado, we'd like to introduce Nectaria Nicolakakis. Nectaria is a specialized scientific advisor in the Will do. Oh, um, uh, she, she, Nectaria is in the Occupational Health Unit of the Institut National de Santé Publique de Québec, and she has a PhD in neuroscience from the Montreal Neurological Institute um, of McGill University. Uh, she completed her postdoctoral training in public health and epidemiology at the Université de Québec à Montréal and in the Hospital Research Center of the University of Montréal and the, again, the INSPQ. Uh, she is interested in the effects of work organization and of physical and uh, psychosocial work exposures on worker health and ineffectiveness of preventative interventions. She is co-leading two COVID-19 projects on healthcare worker mental health and on the effectiveness of preventative intervention in the Quebec meat processing plant. So she's gonna to talk to us a little bit about, about all that and uh, um, her perspectives from Quebec. So welcome, Nectaria. Uh, thank you, Kimberly. Uh, can everybody hear me? Yes, wonderfully, and we see your screen wonderfully. Perfect. Um, so I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna bring you some perspectives from Quebec. Uh, note that I'm not bringing the Quebec perspective because I, I recognize that there can be different uh, points of view. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about public health and occupational health in Quebec, a bit about the Quebec National Institute for Public Health, where I am, the ENSBQ, and then I'm going to give some examples of how we try to bridge the gap between occupational health and public health at our institute, and how we try to uh, integrate considerations of worker health in our public health response to COVID. So I'll talk about some examples from the front line, so to speak. So the relationship between public health and occupational health in Quebec. Just going to minimize this. So in Quebec, public health authorities are responsible for incorporating worker health as part of their legal mandate. Public health directors uh, play a key role in protecting the health of workers by virtue of the Act Respecting Occupational Health and Safety, or Loi sur la Santé et la Sécurité du Travail, in which uh, directors are responsible for the, for the implementation of occupational health programs, and in particular in seeing to the application of health programs specific to establishments and in their assessment and making recommendations if necessary to the occupational health and safety regulator, as well to the physicians in charge of health services in the establishments and the health and safety committees. They're also uh, key in protecting workers by virtue of the Public Health Act and the Act Respecting Health Services and Social Services um, and these laws give several powers and responsibilities to directors and the power to intervene for the purposes of preventing disease, trauma, social problems that can have an impact on the health uh, of the population, population under their jurisdiction um, and to act on the determinants of population health, including that of workers. So in Quebec, there's 18 health regions and 18 regional public health authorities or departments. Um, and within these, within each region, there's occupational health teams um, that carry out workplace prevention activities, and they're part of the, a large network, the Quebec Public Health Network and Occupational Health. Um, the teams are usually comprised of doctors, nurses, occupational hygienists, ergonomists, and their mandate is to elaborate and implement these uh, workplace-specific health programs in collaboration with the employer, the health and safety committees, and workers. Um, and so throughout the pandemic, these teams have been deployed to manage um, workplace outbreaks of COVID. And they've had to, um, they've had to uh, forge some new collaborations with infectious disease teams in the management of these um, COVID-19 workplace outbreaks. So a bit about our institute. Um, the ENSPQ is Quebec's foremost, foremost center of reference and expertise in public health. It was founded in 1998. And its mission is to provide knowledge, guidance, also training and laboratory services to support decision makers and other stakeholders. And in particular, to support the Quebec Minister of Health and Social Services, the regional public health authorities, the establishments of our health and social services network, but also other ministries, uh, government organizations, serve First Nations communities, workplaces, the general public. Uh, the Institute also has collaborations with other Canadian and international public health organizations and academic and research institutions. In fact, many of the medical and research professionals at the Institute also have academic appointments. 
So where's occupational health situated uh, within the Institute? There's six scientific departments and each is subdivided into three to five units or services. And so we have an occupational health unit um, where I am, and that's part of the Department of Biological Hazards and Occupational Health. So very early on in the pandemic, our institute received a mandate from the Ministry of Health and Social Services to create a working group um, that was tasked with producing recommendations for workplaces uh, and workers for Quebec um, in the spirit of trying to harmonize the recommendations uh, from one region to the next. And so we put together this uh, occupational health COVID-19 working group, which was a tripartite group uh, that included uh, the regional public health authorities and professionals uh, who comprised the operational branch, so more on the ground. Our institute was uh, tasked with providing the science and the knowledge, so we were the scientific branch. And then this was coordinated by the Ministry of Health and Social Services as the executive branch. And then in parallel within the Institute, COVID-19 cells were, were organized and coordinated by the scientific director of the Department of Occupational, um, of Biological Hazards and Occupational Health. But very uh, so soon it became clear that there needed to be much more communication and collaboration between these cells. Um, and the working group that was in charge of making recommendations for, for workplaces and, and for sectors and workers expressed this need for much more exchange between the different cells that were working on the COVID response um, uh, on topics such as virus transmission or variants and vaccination, so to make the best recommendations possible. So last fall in September, the GESIC was created, um, which stands for Groupe d'échange scientifique intercellule COVID, basically a forum uh, for scientific exchange among the different experts from the units and departments uh, that were working in these COVID-19 cells. And this is a group that meets every two weeks on a Friday afternoon. And they basically talk about the latest developments. They identify knowledge gaps. Um, they try to harmonize their approaches and set work goals. Um, and it's been viewed as very useful by the, the members of this GESIC. For example, um, it allowed them to kind of harmonize the terminology that was going to be used concerning masks. So were we going to talk about procedural masks, surgical masks in the guidance, medical masks? Um, now the guidance talks about masque de qualité um, and they, they explain what standards that means. So it's a medical uh, quality grade mask, if you want to translate loosely. Another example of uh, how the members of this uh, forum found it useful is that it allowed for aligning the guidance as to the type of masks that were going to be recommended in schools. So the type of masks that were going to be worn both by the students and by the workers in the schools. Um, and I remember um, at one point I tried to schedule a, a work meeting with a colleague on a Friday and the person said, oh, sorry, I can't. We have uh, the COVID-19 happy hour meeting on Friday. And I remember thinking to myself, well, I'd love to be invited to a virtual cocktail on a Friday. I mean, at that point, we, we've all been working from home and isolated. So I, I got a little bit excited about that. But then I quickly realized that he was talking about this Jezik uh, COVID meeting and there was no alcohol involved. Um, but this is just to say that this was, uh, the, this exchange and this form for exchange was very much appreciated by the members that they refer to it as their COVID happy hour or in Quebec, we, we refer to it as the Saint Gasset. Oh, okay. Um, and then there was obviously we wanted to disseminate the research and the knowledge that was being produced uh, by the Institute. So uh, a, a webinar series was launched uh, last November uh, COVID-19 Occupational Health Webinar Series. There's been five webinars since November. I think the last one was in April. And they cover a variety of topics. So one of the topics was on the effectiveness of barrier methods to protect against COVID-19 in personal uh, and professional environments. So it was presenting the results of a systematic review and meta-analysis on that. Other topics have included uh, transmission, variants, vaccination, and outbreaks in workplaces. It was um, created on the initiative of the Occupational Health Unit at the Institute and uh, Quebec's Public Health Network and Occupational Health, the Réseau de Santé Publique en Santé au Travail, and accreditation is provided by the University of Montreal School of Public Health. The webinar series, we feel, was very well received. It had approximately 300 attendees per webinar, and it was targeting basically um, all of public health professionals across Quebec. So now I'll just give some examples of how uh, 
considerations of worker health were integrated into our response to COVID. So this was done through um, various activities uh, pertaining to guidance or training, monitoring and research. And the activities that I've got on this slide are ones that were mandated by the, the health ministry. I already mentioned the, uh, the sector and worker specific guidance that was uh, created by the working group. Uh, was created, drafted in French, but also translated in English and in Spanish in many instances. And it was guidance that was taken up by the Occupational Health and Safety Regulator in Quebec. Um, another activity was worker and employer online training on how to implement and respect the sanitary measures. Online training modules for public health professionals and others on how to recognize and manage workplace psychosocial risk factors during the pan pandemic, which is a, a big concern. There's also an ongoing case control study of healthcare workers who are infected with COVID. Um, and so the study is looking at what were the risk factors for infection in these Quebec healthcare workers. And then there was an add on to the study to look at psychological distress in these uh, healthcare workers and the risk factors associated with psychological distress using indicators of the psychosocial work environment. Um, and, and those reports are published, they're in French. Um, but the study found that the prevalence of high psychological distress in these Quebec healthcare workers was 48% to 56%, something like that, in both the infected workers and the uninfected. And the prevalence, and, and most of this distress was perceived as work-related uh, by the workers. And it was shown that the prevalence of this work-related psychological distress was associated with exposure to high psychological demands, uh, which refers to excessive workload and time constraints, low decision authority, um, low support, both uh, emotional and practical support from colleagues and, and supervisors, low recognition of worker efforts, lacking the means to do quality work, um, difficulty balancing work family obligations, and also working in a manner that is contrary to your uh, professional conscience. Um, the, the last activity on this slide is a mandate, again, that was received last June uh, at our institute to uh, monitor outbreaks in the workplaces and to produce data uh, broken down by industry, region, and some other things. Um, and ever since last June, there's been approximately uh, one report produced every week showing the number of workplaces that have outbreaks and the number of workers. Um, and around the time that this information started uh, becoming public, the Globe and Mail said that it was the most comprehensive information on workplace outbreaks that was released in Canada. And that data from the ENSPQ and the province's health ministry uh, was, was data that few provinces had made available. So here on the left, I've pulled out uh, a type of graph that you might find in one of these reports. This is for the week of May 9th to 15th. So those are the orange bars that represent the, the current week of the report and the turquoise bars represent the, the week uh, prior to that one. And so you have the proportion of workplaces that have an outbreak per 10,000 establishments. The horizontal line presents the provincial average. So for that week, uh, we saw that there was about 19 workplaces with outbreaks per 10,000 establishments uh, province-wide. And if you look at the far left, you can see the manufacturing industry had about four times that with 81 or 82 workplaces experiencing outbreaks per 10,000 establishments. So this was use useful information for public health directors uh, to kind of keep an eye on situations that might require quick intervention. So the last two examples I'm going to talk about are two research studies um, on workers. And one is a study that's being funded by the Health Ministry's Department of Research. And it's looking at organizational strategies to protect healthcare worker mental health during COVID. And the ultimate goal of the, the project was to develop a tool that can support the health and social services establishments in Quebec. And our team is accompanied by what we're calling a consultative committee. Um, and, and it includes 15 professional orders, union groups, and prevention stakeholders who are there to kind of inform the research and also um, contribute to the development of the tool with us. And the way we're trying, we're going to develop the tool first by trying to, to gather and, and generate knowledge through a four-pronged approach. Uh, so first we want to look at, you know, what does the science say are effective organizational interventions to protect mental health? So we did a systematic review of the scientific literature on to evaluate the effectiveness of organization level or psychosocial work environment interventions to protect healthcare worker and mental health during epidemics and pandemics. We're also uh, looking at what other organizations have recommended in terms of organizational level strategies, again, to protect uh, the, the mental health of our healthcare workforce during COVID. 
uh, we have two members on the team who are um, specialized in qualitative data analysis and one who specializes in social media analysis. And so we've been able to look at what were the psychosocial risks at the workplace that were expressed by healthcare workers and what strategies, uh, both individual, collective and organizational, did the workers deploy or did they need um, in order to protect their mental health? Uh, so we looked at public Facebook pages representing uh, three different healthcare worker groups. And finally, we conducted a survey of what organizational practices were implemented to protect mental health and to mitigate these psychosocial uh, work exposures um, in Quebec's 34 health and social services establishments in the different health regions. So we're in the process of uh, finishing up the analysis and then integrating all of these uh, findings from the different components in order to inform the development of this tool. The other project uh, is being done uh, at, at the Institute and the University of Sher Sherbrooke, a colleague there who's a professor in, in ergonomy, ergonomics, in collaboration again with Quebec uh, Public Health Network and Occupational Health. And here we want to evaluate the effectiveness of preventive measures on COVID outbreaks in Quebec abattoir and meat processing plants and explore what would be obstacles and challenges uh, to implementing preventive measures. So we're combining an epidemiological approach and an ergonomic approach. Um, so the epidemiological approach is to, to quantify the effectiveness of the preventive measures on the risk of outbreak and the magnitude of outbreaks. And then with the ergonomic approach, we wanna look more in depth at you know, how were preventive measures actually implemented in the workplace, what difficulties were um, encountered in order to implement them, and what difficulties uh, did workers experience in integrating these preventive measures in their work all the while trying to maintain their health and their productivity at work. And um, so again, we have a small research team on this, but we're also accompanied by a consultative committee of 13 members. Um, we have members from the Quebec uh, Public Health Network and Occupational Health, uh, the Ministry of Agriculture, Canadian Food Inspection Agency, and uh, an Occupational Health and Safety Research Institute in Quebec. So I mentioned we have uh, the Public Health Network and Occupational Health. We have, in fact, eight doctors on the committee uh, who are specialists in public health and preventive medicine or in occupational medicine from different uh, regions, uh, Montérégie, Estrie, Chaudière-Appalaches, Bas-Saint-Laurent, Maurice, Sisson du Québec, Lanaudière, and they've been involved in managing outbreaks of COVID in these abattoirs. Uh, we have the two representatives from the Ministry of Agriculture, MAPAC, and two from the Canadian Food Inspection Agency. And as I mentioned, we have um, a researcher epidemiologist from the Robert Sauvé Research Institute in Occupational Health and Safety. And again, this committee is invaluable in, in the project because of their vast knowledge and experience of, of these uh, abattoirs and these workplaces. Um, and also they're the ones also helping us to establish uh, co initial contact with the workplaces and helping us in recruitment. So this uh, project is actually in its pilot phase um, and hopefully all goes well. If it does, we would expect to have a portrait of the preventive measures across Quebec's abattoir and meat processing plants. Hopefully evidence on the capacity of these measures to re reduce the risk of outbreaks and the magnitude and an increased understanding of what were the obstacles and challenges uh, to implementation and compliance that would need to be overcome um, in the future. Um, this is knowledge that we hope can guide our regional occupational health teams could influence future guidance uh, issued by our institute and others and elsewhere in other jurisdictions that have been uh, uh, struggling with outbreaks in their meat processing plants. And ultimately, this is knowledge that could help improve our practices to protect workers and their productivity. So I'd like to end by thanking uh, the head of the Occupational Health Unit, Matt Pascal Sassin, and my colleagues, Marie-Ève Pelletier and Stéphane Caron, uh, for their input on this presentation and one of my mentors, Catherine Lapel, uh, for sending me a text that I found uh, very useful in my thinking and putting together this presentation. Thank you, Nectaria, and, and I appreciate your sticking around and your, your insight, and isn't it nice to see some case studies of exactly what we're talking about? And we all see the importance here of, you know, when you're facing a global pandemic and when you're facing any problem, uh, a multi or interdisciplinary approach uh, being the stronger way <laughs> to move forward. Uh, so, uh, so thank you so much, and we uh, we look forward to our panel discussion at the end with all of uh, all of your insight.